Biden camp finds selling point in ailing economy, his work on 2009 recovery. During the 2008 campaign, Barack Obama had assured Mr. Biden that he would be consulted on every major decision. So, during a private lunch in February 2009, Mr. Biden slid a memo across the table to Mr. Obama, outlining a role to erase those doubts. Quarterbacking the implementation of the $787 billion economic stimulus that had been rammed through Congress a few days earlier in the depths of recession. Mr. Obama was already pivoting to health care reform, so why not in charge Mr. Biden? As it turned out, Mr. Biden's work on the rollout, implementation, oversight and selling of the 2009 stimulus, officially the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, was the most sustained, and perhaps the most significant, assignment of his time in office. Eleven years later, in an election season, defined by pandemic, economic collapse, and a far larger relief package, Mr. Biden's campaign is hoping to leverage his stewardship of the 2009 stimulus as a point of contrast with President Trump, whose White House is pushing back at congressional oversight, of $2.7 trillion in new spending even as a host of problems has emerged, especially chaos in the small business loan program. An examination of that critical two-year period, drawn from interviews with 30 people involved in the effort, offers a glimpse of Mr. Biden's strengths as a manager, his enthusiasm, focus on detail and knack for leading a first-rate team that moved the money out quickly and minimized waste and fraud. But the stimulus says more about the kind of vice president Mr. Biden was than about the kind of president he would be. There was nothing ambiguous, though, about the impact of the stimulus on Mr. Biden's political fortunes. Yet if overseeing the stimulus proved Mr. Biden was a team player, his pursuit of the assignment, and he wanted it badly, was also a sign that he had never entirely abandoned his own political ambitions. Mr. Biden mentioned the stimulus only in passing on the 2020 trail, when there was a trail, and has only recently begun invoking it as a campaign theme. But it left a bittersweet aftertaste, attacked by progressives as insufficiently bold and savaged by Republicans to this day as a boondoggle with the Republican National Committee chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel, saying in an email last week that the stimulus proves Mr. Biden cannot run a government. Mr. Biden, participants recalled, spoke up for pro-worker provisions, funding for green energy projects, and light rail. Mr. Biden knew better, telling the Speaker and Mr. Obama they would snag four or five Republicans at most. Once the fight was over, Mr. Biden's chief of staff, Mr. Klain, who had held the same post for Vice President Al Gore, drafted the implementation plan that Mr. Obama did not need to read. It amounted to a congenial power grab giving Mr. Biden expansive influence over which projects submitted by local officials and cabinet departments would be funded. Mr. Biden's first priority, according to Mr. Klain, was creating a central management structure aimed at avoiding the kind of confusion that has thus far plagued the financial response to the coronavirus crisis under Mr. Trump. A federal official, who had business with the new vice president, in early 2009 described the following the scene, Mr. Biden arrived 15 minutes late, ripped off his suit jacket and began rattling off questions in front of a roaring fire that turned his office into a furnace, to the stifling discomfort of his visitor, who did not have the option of taking off his coat. A marquee project, in Mr. Biden's birthplace state, Pennsylvania, was a $1.7 million replacement of the bridge over Conodogonay Creek, near Harrisburg. It, too, seemed like a straightforward enough proposition, and Mr. Biden hoped to kick off a national barnstorming tour there within weeks. Nothing proved quite so nettlesome as the project closest to Mr. Biden's heart. Mr. Biden's team achieved its goal of spending 70 percent, or roughly $550 billion, of the stimulus funding, in the first 18 months. The only thing that is more unpopular than me right now is the stimulus, Mr. Obama tartly declared at a cabinet meeting, around that time, as Mr. Biden listened in silence, according to a person in the room.
Against that backdrop, Mr. Biden, anointed salesman of the stimulus, was crisscrossing the country trying to gin up excitement and focusing on what he could control, like making sure the Recovery Act signs on highway projects were large enough to be seen by motorists. Joe led with integrity, which is an enormous contrast, from the current administration. Senator Elizabeth Warren, of Massachusetts, who cited the stimulus in her recent endorsement, of Mr. Biden, wrote in an email. Mr. Trump, whose 2017 National Infrastructure Plan, collapsed because of inattention and muddled planning, has dismissed Mr. Biden's work on the stimulus. But Mr. Trump has not embraced oversight as Mr. Obama did, nor has he deployed Vice President Mike Pence, in the Biden watchdog role, leaving the task to various administration officials, like Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. Thanks for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe.